Disclaimer, all you little buttcups out there, hello. Thanks for hating my channel, because the more hates I get, the more comments I get, the more YouTube and Amazon think I'm popular, you get more money. So carry on. Right, this one is called the Arcade Machine. So it was a bloke called Hal, Greek bloke, brilliant bloke I had working for me, mad as a hatter, fight anything. He was on the Channel 4 documentary with me. Now, we had to go, I think it was Wales, we had to go to an arcade. And like I said, small ticket holding, I know I repeat myself a lot, but small ticket holding for people who haven't been listening to my channel is when people can't go to a bank to get a loan, they go to a finance company, finance company buy the equipment for them, and then they pay back the finance company. But the goods still belong to the finance company. So small ticket holding job. Me and Hal turn up to this arcade in Wales, and uh, arcade machines. We walk in. It's only a very small arcade. Go to see a woman. Is Mr. So-and-so about? No. Can you get him on the phone? No. Um, right, we'll just have a look around. Look around. Only a small place, probably about 20, 30 machines in there. And the machines are right behind us. There's um, two or three of them. And we've got the... What did I have at the time? Um, I forgot what you call it now. We used to have this van where you'd open up the back doors and the bottom goes down. We used to wheel the machines and it went up. Can't remember what it was called, but that's got a name. We found the machines we was after. Asked the woman to get a bloke on the phone. No, we're gonna take the machines out. No, you won't, they're alarmed. I'm like, what difference does an alarm make on the machine? We've got the paperwork here, we're just gonna take it. So anyway, went back to the van and we got a, oh, Razorback. That's what the vans are called, a Razorback. Went back to a Razorback, got the trolley out, went in, picked the first machine up, unplugged it, took it back to the van, loaded it, strapped it all in. And the woman's going mad. We're saying, get the bloke on the phone. And she's speaking to someone. We said, give us the phone. We speak to the bloke. This is how much you owe. Doesn't want to speak to us. We're like, this is crazy. So we get another machine out and then another machine. And I don't know, we might have got two, three, four machines but it filled the back of the Razorback. And we locked up and thought, right, never got arcade machines before. Never had them um, on our sheets. We're like, remember, we could get to keep some of this equipment as well. We can sell it, keep it. Finance company just want to close businesses down or get their payment. So we, we've locked it all up. We're thinking that was such an easy job. We're driving out of Wales. We get a phone call from finance company. Bloke might be making a payment, I don't know, three or four grand, but we've told him he has to pay the lot off, which was about, probably I think about 10K. Now he's seeing if he can raise the funds. Can you just park up, Sean? And if he makes full payments, we're not accepting the arrears. We want him to make full payment because we don't want the arrears. He says, because you've got the machines. So we want full payment. He definitely wants these machines back. So we're like, okay. So just park up somewhere, go and get a coffee. If he makes a payment, take him back. So, me and Hal park up. And you're bored like you are, we're just chatting shit. And I said to Hal, let's go see if we can get these machines open. Because <laughs> I know as well as anyone, it's got money in it. So, me and Hal go in the back and we're rooting around. And there's like holes in the back and there's like little catches. We've got no keys. I have no idea how we did it. But we had like this either spanner or we had this thing. We were, there was these holes, we were shoving like things out. And we managed to get the lock off one of these machines on the back and it come wide open. Uh, there's just shit loads of one pound coins in there. Like, fucking out. And we, we parked up in a side street, but next to us was like Asda. But other supermarkets were available, but this time it was buying Asda. So we pull up there, go and get some carrier bags. <laughs> so Hal goes in, comes out with some carrier bags. Right, like, fuck it, let's empty these slot machines. So empty, we've got loads of coins out this one machine. Right, let's get this other one open. One of the others we couldn't get open. Another one we didn't. I think we managed to get two open out of three, uh, out of four. We now got reinforced carrier bags with all these pound coins in. All right, what do we do? And I said, well, how? I said, go in there. 
get on that machine, like where you put in the coin machine, <laughs> and see how much we've got. He was there for ages. I remember sitting in the van, I get a phone call from a finance company saying, Sean, yeah, take those machines back. The bloke's waiting for them. And I'm thinking, fucking hell, I think just broke into them. And we're like going, how still hasn't come back? Hour and a half has passed. Next thing, how comes out? And it cashed it all in. So I had a look on the ticket and, the, and on the ticket, they take like 10%. And on the ticket, it was like 90 quid. I'm like, 90 quid? So then I asked, how much have we got? And Howard got like 900 quid. Well, we had 810 quid. And I thought, fuck it. I shared it with him, divvied it up, split it. And I said, right, now we've got to get those machines back. So then we had to try and work out how to close the machines because obviously we'd rammed them open and we couldn't. So two of these machines, we just had to like try and jimmy the backs on, lift them up, but they were, they were open a little bit. It was like, shit, when we get back, this bloke is going to be waiting because he's paid. So we pull up, but let's take the good machines in first. So we lift the machines that take the first one in and the woman's going, yeah, just put them there. I told you the bloke were pale. I said, hang on a minute, love. You didn't tell us anything. You wouldn't even speak to us. You just told us we couldn't take them out. She goes, well, they're paid now. Leave them there. And we're looking around. We're like, there's no one else here. And then she goes back around her counter and sits down. So we go, quick, let's go and get the machines we broke. So we go and get the other machines we broke. So we put one in like that. We got the other machine, put it back to back with the other one. <laughs> we got another good one in. And then we put the other one in the back we'd broke. And we just left them there. And we thought, ah, oh, we're going to get the phone call from the finance company when we leave saying there's money missing. But we would have just gone, ah, oh, fuck it. it was, he's just trying it on. Anyway, we left. I was expecting the phone call. We, we went out working all day and um, nothing. Never got a phone call. Never got questioned where the missing money was. And some may have said I was a thief that day, but I would say I was an opportunist. And me and Hal on the way home had a nice steak with peppercorn sauce.